Have you ever opened up Canva and felt just overwhelmed by what you saw? You saw a ton of unnamed files. Maybe you couldn't find the file that you needed to find. Or when you started creating a graphic, you knew that there was a file or a logo or a color somewhere in a different design, but you didn't know how to get it now. And the whole process just ended up taking you hours when it really should have been a 10 minute job. It is something that I used to struggle with and I know a lot of business owners and a lot of my clients struggle with. And I wanna give you some solutions because Canva can be one of the easiest parts of your business. It needs to be something that supports your business to grow. And the way that you can do that is to build a system around it. And in this episode, I wanna give you a bit of an insight into the systems that I use so that you can implement them in your own business. And I wanna caveat this by saying is that you actually need to choose to implement them in and you need to take the time to do that. A lot of things in business involve making time now for something that's kind of boring to save you a ton of time later. And this is one of those things. And so I wanna encourage you to maybe grab out your calendar right now and maybe just schedule in half an hour to implement some of this stuff so that every time you use Canva from now on, it can actually be a process you enjoy. Now, if that sounds too annoying for you, an alternative is to do it live with me. So I'm actually hosting a workshop in a couple of weeks if you're doing, if you're watching this at the time of release. Otherwise you can just put it in your calendar and do it yourself. But I'm hosting a workshop called the Canva Shortcut. And in there, we're gonna be looking at how to use Canva well. We're gonna be creating a brand kit together. We're gonna, I'm gonna teach you a few of my systems. We're gonna look at making a template together and how to edit templates to actually look incredible and a whole lot of stuff around how to use Canva well. Because when you use Canva well, your business will grow faster. And when your business grows faster, I don't need to convince you on why it's great for a business to grow faster, but Canva can really do that because when you're creating professional graphics, when you're not wasting time, when your business is actually looking professional and calling in your right audience, a whole lot of ripple effect things happen. So I want to encourage you to stop flying by the seat of your pants and actually implement really good systems into your Canva so that your business can grow without being hindered by the mess. And so if you'd like to join that workshop, make sure you head to whitedeer.com.au forward slash Canva shortcut. That's on November the 10th here in Australia, November 9th in the evening if you're in the US, uh, 2025. If you're watching this after that, go ahead and do these things I'm going to teach you anyway. But if you want to do them with a whole group of us, then I will give you time in that workshop to actually implement these changes. So let us dive on in. So hi, if we have not met yet before, welcome to my podcast. I am thrilled to have you here. I'm pretty much the designer that is stopping the gatekeeping and helping everyday humans create incredible graphics for their business. Because when people have incredible graphics for their business, their business attracts the right people, it looks professional and they feel so much more confident showing up, plus save a ton of time. And that's what I do here in my podcast and on my YouTube channel. And I'm so, so thrilled to have you here. If you are on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple, make sure you hit follow. All right, so let's now dive in. So first I wanna talk you through pretty much the Canva isn't the problem. A lot of us, we get caught in this idea of blaming something else when it's honestly kind of us that's to blame. This is like a general life principle. When you blame something else for your problems, you tend to not deal with said problems and the problems remain. Whereas when you take ownership of the problems, even if it's something as simple as Canva, then you can start to actually make changes to fix said problems. And so that's what I want to encourage you to do today is take ownership of our problems and fix the problems. <laughs> You're welcome. Brainwave, I know. Um, okay, so most people open Canva like it's a playground. They just open it, ping, 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 and get what they want and leave. They don't kind of treat it like a workflow and it really should be a workflow. Now, I've done a ton of different episodes on how I use Canva to like as a system for my podcast or a system for different things. So feel free to go back and binge those uh, different episodes. But for now, I'm going to talk through an actual structure that you can use for your everyday designs because I don't want you having no plan, no structure and no brand style because when you do that, you end up having to start every design from scratch. You end up looking and wasting time searching for designs for ages and you lose time doing menial tasks in your business, when you as a business owner need to be doing the top task, you need to be spending your time really strategically or you're going to get burnt out and not see the success from things. You need to do things strategically and I hope this episode will help. So I want to bring you in now to my personal Canva system. Now I want to caveat this by saying if you hear one of my systems and think Jackie that would not work for me, chances are you're, you're right. Everyone in our brains, they all work differently and I've seen that every time I've shared my system with my students in the co-creation design club. They're like Jackie that's really great but I would like to do it this way and so I'm like oh I see that, how about you try this and they're like yes that will work perfectly. So take what I'm sharing here today and make it work for you and your brain because my brain works differently to other people's brains. And you can even tell if you're watching on YouTube, my setup here isn't minimal. I'm not a minimal kind of gal. I, I don't mind a little bit of mess. So my system that I'm going to share with you today isn't about making things perfectly clean cut and flawless. It's about making a system that works for you. And so feel free to find and tweak this to suit whatever works for you and your brain through the process. I'm going to share with you five different ways and five different systems that I use. I'm going to be real with you. These aren't groundbreaking. 
but you do need to do them. <laughs> They're not going to have any sort of impact if you don't do them. So the first one is to name your files. If you've been listening for me, to me for any amount of time, you'll know that I've said this before and it's because it's the most important thing. Name your files. Every single design you make in Canva should not be the default name. The default name of your Canva files will be the first words that you typed in that file. So if you were typing, join me for this masterclass, then the title of that Canva design is going to be join me for this masterclass. You need to go back and rename your files. So what I want you to do is click on the top right hand corner inside your Canva and type in the name. And this name doesn't just have to be social media post. I want you to add as much information in here as necessary. There's no prizes for short names and titles here. You need to, I feel like the longer they are, almost the more, more helpful they are. So for me, if I was doing a social media post on promoting a bundle I was doing, I would have the word bundle, social media post. I might even write the word Instagram in there. I might also write the word, um, maybe something to do with the date, like 2025, if I was going to do future versions of this kind of design and kind of anything else that's relevant. Because what happens is that when you're inside your Canva home, you can search for designs. And so if, for example, I was looking for this post, I might search like in a year's time when I want to redo this kind of post again, I might search bundle Instagram. And because I'd used the word bundle and Instagram and not just social media post and not just 2025, I was able to find it. And so use any words that you think future you is going to use to find this file again and pop them in. You can just put spaces between the words or you can put underscores. I personally just do spaces and I just put a ton of different words that are relevant to what I think future me might use. Now, obviously the more repetitive you can get with this naming system, the better it's going to be. For me, I have a shocking memory, so I don't have a specific system that I use every single time. But if that supports you, then do that. Like you might always choose to put the date first or the date last, or you might always choose to put social media post second and then the topic of it first. Whatever it is, find a system that works for you or, or just make sure that whatever you're doing is really clear and something that future you can remember. So that three times now, but it's really important because that's the reason we're, we're filing this well is for future you. It's not for current you. Current you couldn't care less. You've already got the design open. So future you to be able to go back and reference. So that's really important. The second step is to move that file to somewhere that's relevant for you. So if it was a social media post, you might choose to move that file into a folder called social media posts or Instagram or bundle or whatever is, again, going to make the most sense for future you. I don't care if your system makes sense to me, not relevant. I don't care if my system makes sense to you. I care if my system makes sense to me. And so make sure that whatever you choose to do, it makes sense. So for me, for example, some of the systems and folders I have is things like presentation slides. And so every time I do a guest masterclass, I whack those slides, I whack those files into my folder of slides. And that way, if I ever need to redo a presentation, I can just go to that folder, scroll through and think that one and that one, I might duplicate those or copy and paste some pages out and reuse those. Because you should honestly, after you've been using Canva for a month or two, you should barely be starting any designs from scratch. You can reuse and duplicate designs from previously done things. So that's another tip for you is don't start designs from scratch. So build out your folders, add designs into those folders and remember then to use those folders. And those folders are accessible right inside a design. You might even choose to open up your folders inside a design. It's called Project and you can access all your folders or you might choose to go to your Canva home and again on the left hand panel click on projects and it will open up all of your different folders and you can just go in and find what you need and you can move a design whether you're just in your Canva home section you can click on a design and press move or even when you're inside a design you can just press file and then move and it will you can choose which folder you want to put it in or choose to create a new folder right there. Now it's worth noting here too folders aren't just for designs folders can also be for screenshots or images and so I had a student ask me today on our co-creation design club call she's like why are your uploads so neat ordered and I said firstly they're not just like how do you not lose things between all of your clients and yourself and I said well usually I just use a picture straight away from my upload so I don't need to access it back again but if I do need to re-access things like a brand photo shoot or screenshots from like testimonials or some, or a particular program logo I add that to a folder so when you're inside your uploads like maybe you're just inside a design just uploaded three headshots that you really like you can actually click on a little checkbox on that photo and then down the bottom is an option to move those images that you've selected to a folder you can either move multiple images at once and move them to a folder or or you can just select on one image at a time and move to a folder. It's really important that you just do that on the go. Just get into the rhythm of doing it because when you get into the rhythm, it means that you're never actually caught out later on. It means that you're never, oh, what design did I use that image in? Why can't I find that anymore? Think about the things you're going to need to access again, whack them in a folder. It literally will take you 10 seconds. It's just an annoying 10 seconds because it's taking you out of the flow of designing, but I promise you that future you will be like, thanks girl, I appreciate you spent the 10 seconds to do that for me because it's just saved me 10 minutes of searching. So I also just mentioned re 
using design. So I'm going to go into that more now as our third tip. So if you've been doing a design in Canva for very long, you're going to have already have made a social media post. You're going to have already made a presentation slide or anything that you're doing regularly in your business, you're going to have already done before. So reuse that. So when you say, for example, when I'm making a new slide deck for a presentation for maybe I'm guest master casting in someone's ma- mastermind, I might click on a previous slide deck that I've made, hover over that design, click on the three dots and select make a copy. When I do that, it means that that's then going to make a whole duplicate of that design. And I can just, again, first thing I do is change the heading of that to be like masterclass slides for X person's mastermind. And then now I can research that file in the future. I might then quickly also add it to my presentation slides folder for easy access as well. Then I can go in and just tweak the heading, maybe tweak the call to action, change a few things on the inside and I'm done. Or I might choose to strip it right back and recreate most of the content. But again, I've got a general layout that I can use even if I'm still replacing a lot of the text. And so if you're ever making a new design in Canva and you're, you catch yourself opening up a blank document, before you do that, just think, have I ever made a design similar to this in the past? And this might even be a different size design. Like say, for example, I'm making a Instagram post to promote a masterclass of mine. I might have already made a Facebook ad or an Instagram story to promote this masterclass. I can actually go into that design, hit on the resize button as a Canva Pro user and resize that to the size that I need for this new post. I don't have to start it from scratch. Or if you're making an Instagram post for to promote um, this freebie, you remember that actually I've already made a freebie in the past and I already made a post advertising it. I'm going to duplicate that past design for that freebie, edit that, and then I can post that live within a few minutes rather than starting my design from scratch. So I want you to, if you've already done a few designs, think through first, have I made anything similar to this that I can duplicate? If the answer is no, then you can start a design from scratch and maybe use Canva's templates as a starting point for you. But if you have, reuse a past design. Promise me you'll do that. And now for our fourth tip, I want to mention this. I've already mentioned it before, but I need to make it its own point so you really, really understand it. Please use Canva's search bar. Please use Canva's search bar. Please use Canva's search bar. I never want you to be scrolling through your designs and looking for something. Use Canva's search bar. And that search bar doesn't just pick up your file name. It also picks up any word used inside your design. So if for some reason past you did you a dirty and did not name your file, I want you to think through what did I, what were some words that I said in that design? Like if I did a post about joining my masterclass and I did a little call to action on that post that said join free masterclass, I might search the words join free masterclass in my Canva search bar and it will bring up every single design of mine that has the words in it, join free masterclass. And I can then scroll through that small selection of designs to find the design I'm looking for. And when you actually hover over a design when you're in that search section or when you're in your Canva home, it will start scrolling through the pages in that design. So if you have multiple designs in one file, just hover your mouse over the top of it, don't click, and it will just slowly scroll through the pages in that design and you can see, oh yeah, there it is on page three, that's what I need. And you can click and open it up and get to work. So just make sure you're utilizing Canva search bar to find text inside a design or to find text in just for the name of the file. Sometimes Canva will also search text that it reads in an image. So if you've uploaded an image of you holding up a piece of paper that says, I enroll now, it might actually be able to read that text in there too, which is really helpful. And my last tip for you, which is something we're really going to be working on in the Canva shortcut workshop is your brand kit. Having a brand kit is so, so very important. So this is for you if you have Canva Pro and if you are running a business online and you're using Canva as your main design platform, investing in Canva Pro is something that you really should be doing. It's so much cheaper than hiring a designer. It will save you so much time because you don't have to do all these workarounds to work on Canva free. Your time is money, right? If you do want to do Canva Pro, there's an affiliate link in the description will help support my channel. Thank you. Um, But also you can do workarounds. I do teach my students and clients and I will be teaching this in the Canva workshop on how to do a a brand kit without Canva Pro, but it's not really a brand kit. It's just something to reference and you can copy and paste later. It's not as helpful as a brand kit. A brand kit in Canva Pro is where you can access your colors, your fonts, your logos, your images, your icons at any point during designing any graphic. And so I want you to make sure if you haven't already, you go into your Canva brand kit and you spend that time uploading your logo files. You choose your brand colors, you upload your brand fonts or select them from Canva's options. You add in your photos, you add in everything into that section. And again, this will literally take you 10 minutes if you've got all your files on hand, but the time that it will save you later on when you're doing your designs is so, so, so huge. Not only will it save you time too, it will mean that your designs are consistent and cohesive. And when your designs are consistent and cohesive, guess what friends? That means your designs look more professional and more trustworthy. When your brand looks more professional and trustworthy, you are going to get more sales because people believe what you're saying and they believe that they can trust you. So make sure you spend that time doing that. Again, we're going to work on this during the Canva shortcut workshop. So if you haven't yet done your brand kit and you're like, Jackie, I really just need to get this done. Even if your brand is not 100% perfect, 
perfect. Your brand kit isn't set in stone. If you're like, I think I'm really liking these colors, but I haven't like completely sold, sold on them yet, pop them in, use them, and then change them if you need to. That's one of the biggest tips. During my, I have a whole course that teaches you how to make your own brand. And one of the tips I say in there is create something and then use it because colors can look really great in a beautiful color palette, but until you start using them, you don't know if they're right. So even if you're not 100% sold on your colors, pop them in, use them for a little bit, and then update them if you need to. And so those are the five tips for you. So just as a bit of a summary, make sure you're always naming your files. Make sure you add things to different folders, whether that's a design or whether that's an image. Make sure that you're reusing designs and maybe even making your own templates. Make sure you're using the Canva search bar to find any old designs that you need to reference or use again. And make sure you prioritize setting up your Canva brand kit so that whenever you're in a design, your fonts are there, your colors are there, your logos are there, your photos are there. Everything is just accessible for you right inside every design you work on. And there's buttons to even, you can just press a button and it applies your colors to the whole design. Dunskis. Like it's so much easier to do this once you've committed the 10 annoying minutes to actually put it into your brand kit. If you need to know how to do that, I've got a tutorial on it. The will link here or in the show notes if you're listening on the podcast. But I really recommend if you're watching this before November 10th, 2025, come along to the Canva Shortcut Workshop and we can do some of these things together. You'll see me give a live demonstration. You can follow along as I do it. So thank you for joining me for this episode. If you're not yet already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I look forward to having you along for another podcast very soon. And I hope to see you at that Canva Shortcut Workshop. All right. That is all from me. See you next time.